Thank you everyone for tuning in for VPK by Maharshi Ayurveda. I'm Valerie Brown and this is our Growing Up and the Kapha Dosha webinar. Kapha Dosha is slow, it's steady in nature, and it embodies a lot of our structure and stability in the body and in the mind. And sometimes the influence of Kapha can simply be a matter of our age. So here to discuss the Kapha period of life with us is classically trained Vaija and research scientist, Dr. Dinesh Gaiwali. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you, Valerie, for having me again. Namaste, everyone. Namaste. Okay, now the Kapha period of life, when is this dosha predominant for us? Well, Kapha is a tricky one. Kapha is uh, prevalent from the very beginning. Very beginning from conception, actually, there is a huge role of kapha um, from the moment our, our jaikot is formed. And up until the, all the dhatus, all the bodily organs, the bodily function is fully matured, uh, then until that age of life is called kapha. Ayurvedic scholars have a very, again, there is no one, um, one uh, fine uh, line, but they have normally uh, agreed upon that the first 25 years of life is where you are literally a child. So 25 years uh, of life, you are still growing up. Uh, and it is uh, amazing that uh, how, uh, how in, in the name of modern diet and modern lifestyle, how uh, our childhood ages are being shrunken day by day and people kids feel much more mature much more sooner mm -hmm. uh, and than needed basically they are not and uh, that kind of worries me a little bit because uh, up until 25 years of age you are still growing up so i would say 25 years up until 25 years one is still kapha mm -hmm. and, do, and do you think that's universal both for men and women yes it is kind of universal for men and women um, may, uh, there's a broad understanding that women kind of get mature a little earlier than men, but your wisdom teeth comes uh, at around the age of 25. That means you're still growing up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that is the Ayurvedic concept too. And uh, uh, in this uh, growing up period, your dhatus are still immature. Uh, so you would let them grow up. You would let them grow up, not, uh, not even entertain any um, uh, degenerating aspect of tattoos, uh, you, know, you know, all these over exercise and over exertion are literally not so good for somebody who is still growing up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. basically where we are still uh, growing up up until the age where everyone thinks they are mature enough. <laughs> yeah, no, I know that you have children right now as well. Yes. So, um, and then I think a lot of this information can be really valuable for parents as well as, as you see your children growing up. Yes, it is so very important because as we know, this is the time where you invest, where you um, kind of like, like, just like a plant, you give them good, you know, water them, you give them good manure and, you know, you take care of themselves. And once it goes, grows bigger and it ripe, you know, gives the fruit. But if the nutrition, if the, um, if the taking care at this stage is not happening well enough, then the, you can think about the quality of the fruit this plant gives and then so will the seed. So this, is, uh, this stage of life is very, very important, uh, not only on a level of diet and lifestyle and physical activities, but also on an emotional level. It is so very important uh, to uh, address all different various um, aspects of one's life uh, because that is going to lead the whole life of this person. Uh, you can you know, isolate one aspect of it, for example, diet. If a child is not uh, fed uh, a good, healthy, organic, well-prepared, and as per the dosa type, as per the body type, food personalized diet, uh, then the nutrition level is impaired and basically what you are, um, you know, giving this child is factory made food, 
uh, all you know general factory the, which is not even you know food and and hormones and whatnot and the child may seem you know have you know taller you know stronger and all of that from outside but this does have a huge huge toll on the inner uh, quality of their physiology same with the environment same with the family structures uh, and school and all these different aspects all these different stimuli a child is exposed to and uh, it as a parent is really challenging in modern times to you know it's really scary also you cannot run away from it mm -hmm. uh, but you do your best what else can you do <laughs> you do your best Mm -hmm. Now, in, in your clinic, you see a lot of different ages from the students at the university. Yeah. Uh, now, what, what kinds of typical imbalances do you see when people are in this kapha period of life, or even from your own children? Oh, uh, it, is, it is tricky um, because, the, as I said, the age of ch childhood is shrinking day by day. So those who are already in university would have more of a pitta type of imbalances than the kapha type. But if you consider uh, my son or, or the kids, uh, children of, uh, you know, uh, below 16 or 20 even, uh, 18, 20 or 16, then they would have mostly kapha imbalances like the imbalances pertaining to respiratory system um, and muscles. And it to be very specific kids, children, below the age of uh, five actually would have most of this kapha type of imbalances a lot of mucus a lot of uh, um, ear infections a lot of um, pneumonia and breathing problems and um, all these things do occur during this uh, this time of their life so um, mostly the problems that a child goes through is uh, more mostly water related issues and not so much because dosha wise also kapha people have uh, kapha dosha gets 20 different types of illnesses pitta gets uh, 40 different types of illnesses and vata gets 80 different types of illnesses so kapha do not normally do a lot of illnesses but when the child children do get imbalances they are mostly pertaining to um, breathing respiratory issues uh, and mucus, that kind of uh, inflammatory and respiratory issues that uh, one would have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, in this period of, of the life, which it's it's a huge range from conception to twenty five, there's a lot happening in there. But ideally, what what is Kafa's greatest influence during this period of life? Uh, Kafa's greatest influence, um, I would say, no matter what, because they are growing up, they would have a lot of fat, adipose tissue. So it is good that a child is looking chubby. It is no. good. They shouldn't be overfed. They shouldn't be obese. Uh, that's not good. That's not Kafa even. But if a child is uh, chubby, they need fat. They need fat because their body organs are delicate, they are still growing up, that fat is going to be metabolized inside uh, internally to, uh, to develop their bodily organs. So that is one general, uh, if a child is chubby, it's good. <laughs> they meant to be chubby. Uh, that's the kapha stage of life. But if their child is fat, obese, then that's not good because they, they need to move and they need to, you know, uh, actively uh, metabolic activities should happen in their body uh, so from the age of childhood one need do not need to worry about oh he is so you know chubby or fat he, he we have to take care of no it's, it's not the time they will outgrow uh, the adipose tissue that's what people call it baby fat and all that kind of oh, thing. makes sense uh -huh. yes. so it is good that a child is chubby at times and depending on the culture some children are overfed some t children go through um, poor nutrition. Doesn't necessarily mean a fat child or a chubby child is healthy or properly getting proper nutrition. Um, um, the way they are fed or they are given food, uh, the quality of food they are getting is very, very important. So, uh, and it's, it's the time, you know, it's just like uh, morning shows the day. 
there is a saying. So if this uh, stage of life of a child is not taken care of properly, then their whole uh, life uh, will be uh, based upon these experiences that they go through. So it is the proper time to give them better nutrition, a better education, better environment, better culture, demeanor, uh, behavior, all these things. So there is a huge responsibility uh, on parents uh, to make their children's life the best way they can. Mm -hmm. and, and with our other uh, dosha through the ages webinars too, you mentioned in, in the other ones as well that the period that we're in is kind of setting you up for the next one to come. So yes. since cough is the first one, this is setting up foundation for everything after. It is, it is. That is why it is so very important to work on nutrition, work on their education, and 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 uh, that is why, as I as I just mentioned, that it is the time we have to really uh, conserve the energy because our you know physiologist is still growing up. Uh, but um, children, this uh, in modern times, they they feel fully mature by the age of ten yet they have so much to grow up and so much to build up their endurance um, uh, yet. But, you know, when a, when a child says, I haven't seen this in my whole life and he's just 10 years old and life, okay, oh, there's a life to go. And so this is one tenth of a life we are talking about. So I, I, I feel keenly, I, I you know, it's kind of like culture shock to me also. I feel like um, children, in the Western culture, and I'm not, you know, being judgmental or anything. It's just my understanding that we have, uh, you know, knowingly and knowingly um, kind of taken their childhood, um, uh, and and with modern technology, not being able to go outdoors and safety issues and exposure and internet and whatnot, all these uh, influences are really, really taking this whole generation in a different level. Having said that, we do not need to be that frustrated also because there are a lot of things that are happening, people are now, and there are instruments and there are facilities, you know, you, it's just an extra work. As a parent myself, <laughs> I was just before this webinar, I was just uh, out in the park to take my son to take a walk. At least he is summer vacation right now and he's, you know, he could go take a one hour walk and play in the park. So there are structures and facilities that help us getting these uh, goals. Uh, you know, we just have to put extra attention on it. Uh, instead of taking him to walk, I would have spent something more fruitful for my personal growth. But I'm a father. So it's being a parent, you have to be a little bit uh, giving uh, and uh, and every every parent would like to give to their um, children. Uh, so uh, it, it, we just have to do extra work and have conscious effort. If we think, oh no no, I don't have time. Uh, I better do this productive thing, for, you know, for my career and this and that. Then the child would end up watching, you know, YouTube or something, and then it wouldn't feel you good, you know, make make you feel good and so it's, it's a whole different ball game when we were a child and now the, our children are going through so extra work is needed um, to balance their uh, kapha and you know because they have a lot of kapha there are a lot of fat they need to work out also they need to get involved in physical activities same with nutrition um, um, you know there are so many influencing factors junk food fast foods and all of these things we have to keep them away from it uh, at times it is okay but you know uh, if a parent is super busy and not have enough time to feed their child and it is not only about busyness it's just not knowing what to feed to your child and what is their physical needs and how they will be probably eating properly uh, mm -hmm. so uh, it is it is tricky and uh, as parent and as caretaker of children, we really have to uh, explore different avenues, how we can shape their child future in a better way. Mm -hmm. and, and I think, you know, I'm not a parent, but I, I know that you are, and it's just navigating even the modern society of it, because it was much different 
I know when I was a child than than it is now. I mean, we didn't have cell phones or the internet and exactly. climbed exactly. trees and got dirty. <laughs> exactly. So it is is whole different ballgame. And I was I did an article a few months ago in Iowa Source where my child was uh, on a on a front page. Uh, cook and be healthy or happy or something. Cook and be happy. Uh, where uh, they put a poster, a front page, a picture of my child cooking, uh, cutting zucchinis. He was cutting zucchinis with a uh, with a butter knife. Uh, and my child somehow is, uh, you know, happy being in kitchen. Uh, and I encourage him completely that he, uh, many adults don't even know what ginger is, but my son makes a ginger soup and carrot soup and whatnot. And not that he likes it, but at least he knows how to cook food and appreciate the food. And this food is healthy. I wish he did not like ice cream and popsicles <laughs> so much. <laughs> but I cannot yeah, control that, uh, you know, due to the influences. But I don't expose him so much with uh, those kind of things. Even if yesterday we were making a healthy fresh organic uh, uh, orange juice popsicles. So I, I at least can do that, right? So he wants popsicles in summer. Okay, let him have it. But I can, I can ha- encourage him to make a, a milk popsicle instead or something which is more healthier. So we really, it's really tricky for, uh, for a new parent actually, uh, how to navigate uh, in, the, in their needs. And they're all staying home and, they need things to do. If you do not uh, uh, appreciate their activity, their uh, inquisitiveness and their curiosity, then they will end up watching TV all day long or, you know, not being productive. And then that will really um, take a toll on on their emotional, physical uh, health also. So Mm -hmm. it, it is a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. So, what are what are some top tips that you do have for um, for kapha, whether it's lifestyle or dietary activity? Lots of exercise is needed because kapha is big and fat and a lot of weight. So they need to, and it applies to those kapha built people, uh, no matter what stage of life they are. Uh, sometimes we mistake kapha with ama. Um, because uh, there is a very small difference or a thin line of, um, you know, difference between kapha. Bad kapha is basically ama. Uh, so ama is this poor, you know, result of poor nutrition, poor digestion, which is heavy and sluggish and uh, makes you mentally foggy and all of that. Uh, kapha, uh, healthy kapha is good. It is good for awareness. It is. Uh, good for muscles and all of that, but when the kapha goes out of balance, it can really end up be uh, easily end up be becoming an ama. Mm. So, all those people who are dealing with ama and or kapha uh, uh, also need to be more active, more physically active, uh, eating uh, things which are easy to digest again, favoring more soups. Uh, more uh, nourishing food rather than quantity wise and quality wise um, lots of activities not having sweet tooth so much not favoring so much of sweet uh, taste and desserts and ice creams and cakes and things like that Um, and favoring more on activity if somebody is uh, big enough and do not have great appetite they can even choose to fast occasionally intermittent fasting or any other form of fasting is also fine it doesn't have to be completely fasting but they can do liquid diet or fruits only diet or vegetable only diet focus more on green leafy vegetables cooked vegetables than on carbohydrates or or heavy dairy or cheese or pizza or that kind of thing so lightening their diet and lightening their body through exercise is something they can do Warmth is important. So uh, coffee is also kind of cold, but uh, warmth in general helps that ama or bad kapha melt. So if somebody, and and it applies with the kids, also in the children uh, uh, who are basically going through respiratory problems, there are lots of uh, products uh, and uh, herbs that can help prevent this thing. 
uh, and every parent ex experiences this their children are getting more um, you know cold and all of that and one thing I suggest every parent is to prevent cold uh, in, in children so warm them up bundle them up during the cold season and give them some nourishing warm soup and and things that like that not definitely not favoring cold icy drinks especially during winter and giving them warm well-cooked food moderately spiced food um, not factory made food um, those kind of things are very important for parents to know uh, warmth Warmth is very important, especially in the younger children, uh, children below the age of five. Uh, we have Maharshi Ayurveda has Chavan Pras. I'm so glad Chavan Pras came now. Uh, that uh, you can literally give Chavan Pras to every child below the age of five or, or older, and especially those who have a uh, vulnerability to the respiratory illnesses have them take one teaspoonful of um, Chavan Pras every single day or Amrit if you can afford. Uh, I do that. I do that with my son. And in the beginning, they may not like it, but over the time, they will love it um, and have just build up their uh, immunity because at this stage of life, they will have poor immunity also. Mm -hmm. So Kapha stage of life, you kind of build up their endurance, build up their immunity to fight against all these imbalances. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious to know, because I've talked with you before and you said that you gave your son, uh, I think Amr and Chavan Prash, but how do you give it to him? Just off the spoon or do you mix it off in the something? Spoon. Off, off the spoon, spoon. it's really nice. And uh, we grew up with that. Um, you know, there was a different brand of Chavan Prash back, uh, back in India. Um, so uh, yeah, Chavan Prash just licking as a, as a jam or jelly. Mm -hmm. as, really good uh, my son's day starts with one teaspoonful of chaman pras in winter i make sure it, he gets two teaspoonful of chaman pras he's four years old not everyone has to have the same amount um so um four or five years old toddlers can have one to two teaspoonful of chaman pras a small teaspoonful of chaman pras and that will prevent off from all the respiratory illnesses is again prevention is better than cure so is we are not talking about this as a medicine but uh, we do use tulsi tulsi we have fresh leaves so we make um you know some home remedies of tulsi pipali the long paper and some ginger some turmeric all these things are basically promoting one's respiratory health and they are really really nice recipes really nice herbs that can prevent uh, one from having cough problems Mm -hmm. and, and then you mentioned cold drinks and I know that oftentimes we see children they drink cold milk but in Ayurveda there's not a lot of recommendation for cold big milk. No, big no no it's uh, I, I don't know Ayurveda has never talked probably about why milk should be boiled but it's more of a cultural thing um, but boiled milk uh, is uh, and that is why probably in the West, there is a lot of sensitivity against milk because uh, the way milk is taken is straight out of fridge and not boiled. And people have a logic, oh, it's a homogenized, which means it goes to the temperature of high temperature, but it's just for a few seconds. What we ask for people is to not only milk, but boil, but spice it up also. Um, uh, boil it for a longer time so that it changes the quality of the molecules so that milk is basically for the calves, not for human digestive system. So it, once you boil it, it is uh, supposedly um, better to be able to be absorbed by our uh, gut, our alimentary canal. Then only we can literally um, be tolerant to milk. Uh, a lot of um, uh, lactose intolerance in this part of the world, I think, is due to the way it is taken. And there's a uh, you know high fat milk and low fat milk and all of that. So, uh, but um, in in South Asia, in India, there is no such thing. Uh, lactose intolerance is very minimum. Lately, it is going, but it's very less. And I cannot imagine uh, anyone. Well, I know uh, for sure how how it is how cold milk is taken here. But no, as an Ayurvedic doctor, it will be my responsibility to uh, encourage anyone, everyone, to have a, a boiled milk. You can put uh, cardamom if you have pita pita thing. Uh, if you have, a, you can put ginger. You can put turmeric. 
uh, or you can simply take it with rose petal preserve or you know uh, or simply milk drink milk uh, boiled milk uh, always boiled milk uh, what i do in my home personally is we have a big dish we almost boil half a gallon of milk uh, in the morning uh, we boil it for a few minutes and then we leave it uh, in summer we put it in the fridge after the boiled milk already and in the same dish and by the end of uh, the day uh, then dish is empty the, the half gallon of milk is finished as we heat it up and my boy takes it a few times a day and milk promotes ojas milk promotes kapha and it is a rich source of calcium and i know there is a, you know I, I, one can argue a lot about the drawbacks of milk and all of that um, but i'm a big advocate of milk Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, Dr. Gawali, thank you for your insights. And, um, and I really enjoy hearing about what happens in your household as well. I've met your son and he's adorable. <laughs> so it's, it's really great to hear what happens in your household. So what final insights or encouragement can you share with everybody about navigating this kapha period of life? I would say um, in general, as we have been talking about um, uh, in, in other stages, there were, uh, you know, terms that I used, but um, in general, kapha, kapha problems should be dealt with warmth, I would say. Um, a big, uh, especially kapha issues come around during the winter season when there is a cold exposure or even during the summer season, a lot of cold, people take a lot of ice and all of that and all of a sudden you get a kapha uh, cold. Uh, so taking care of the um, upper part of the body because our upper part of the body is also kapha pre pre predominant. You may get sore throat and tonsillitis and sinuses and you know chest infection and inflammation, mucus and all of that. So a uh, warmth in general, take warmth. Uh, you have kapha spice mix from mapi. You can take those. Um, they can be a little hot for somebody. If you want to go for a safer side, vata spice mix is my favorite because this is a moderate spice anyone can tolerate. Um, and favor well-cooked food, favor warmth, favor warm water, warm drinks, soupy drinks, be active and warmth in general, uh, you know, inside out. It is very important for kapha um, imbalances and kapha stages of life to favor warmth. Uh, of course, during summer, you can be a little easy, but uh, especially when it, there is change of season, uh, autumn or even spring and during winter, for sure, you have to be extra careful about keeping your children warm and um, not exposing them to a lot of cold things, food and or drinks. Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much for all of your encouragement throughout this webinar, too. We really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, Valerie. Nice to talk to you. Yeah, thank you everyone for tuning in as well to watch this webinar. And if you're interested in learning about the Vata period of life or the Pitta period of life, we'll provide links for, all, for those additional webinars for you as well. Thanks for tuning in.